Okay, my name is uh, Shaul, Shaul Katsav. I'm uh, from Israel, was born in Israel uh, back in 1970. I grew up in Tel Aviv. I uh, was in uh, the military, in the army, and uh, back in uh, the years 88 to 91, I, was, I served as a paratrooper. After uh, the military service, I went to study, studied electrical engineering. Um, after studying, I went to, uh, I was in the Far East for almost a year. During that uh, um, traveling, I really seek for questions about, I start to ask questions about life, the meaning of life, uh, which led me to uh, search about the meaning of life. I searched into, uh, I looked into philosophy, uh, spoke with many, uh, even monks, Thai monks, Nepali uh, uh, spiritual people. But then I was surprised to hear that uh, Jesus was a Jew. I don't know why I mentioned now Jesus. Jesus was always for us, it was a no-no. There's no way that the Jew would believe in Jesus. But through the traveling, I've discovered that, but it was always in the back of my mind. When I went back to Israel, I felt that I need to uh, continue my traveling, but I need to make more money. During the time that I was uh, working in one of the jobs, I was shared about uh, Yeshua. First, I thought that it's, there's no way that uh, Yeshua could be the Messiah of Israel, but after um, speaking with a person and reading his testimony book and Starting to read the Bible for the first time, very seriously, I found out that Yeshua is the Messiah of Israel through reading, especially through reading uh, the Tanakh. After um, a year of um, searching the scriptures, I came to the realization that Yeshua, Jesus, is the Messiah of Israel. Since then, my life was uh, completely changed. It's a very important question to ask uh, a Jew, what, what do you feel about Christian people? In the back of my mind, I knew that there's a lot of good Christians. And the fact that the Jews were uh, massacred, murdered, it was because of many Christian people that wanted to do evil. I believed in all my heart, back in the day, that the Christians are wrong that they have uh, no truth in their hand, that the truth is with us, the Jewish people, and we are the only one that really believe in, um, in God. When I heard about Yeshua, for me, Yeshua was just a person that uh, he was a Jew, he walked among the Jewish people, but he has done, from what I have perceived, he has done something so awful to the Jewish people that um, he had to pay with his life for it. For some reason, the Christians believe in him. For some reason, they want to accuse the Jewish people to, that they killed him. This is what I felt about the Christian people. I didn't have hatred. I had... Um, um, remorse. I don't want to. That I don't want to deal with any anything that is Christian. I rather to focus on whoever I am, a Jewish person. Before I've decided to accept Yeshua as my savior. After I met this person, his name was Yaakov Damkani. He was uh, uh, an evangelist. I went to uh, see him in a congregation back in Tel Aviv. There was a time that people laid hands on someone and prayed for him. I remember for some reason that I also stretched my hand, even though I was not a believer, to pray for that person. And then I felt heat in my hand. I didn't know what it was, but I really felt heat in my hand, and uh, I was impressed by it, but not knowing what I've experienced. But the greatest experience, the first ex experience that I had with, uh, with the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, was when I received the Lord, when I invited the Lord in my heart. Three weeks after that uh, uh, meeting, uh, I've decided to accept Yeshua to my heart. 
and the meeting was in Jaffa, uh, in a house there. Uh, it happened on uh, June 1996. What happened was that I shared with the people there about what brought me to the Lord. I've shared with them that I researched the Bible for a whole year. I researched uh, uh, the Tanakh. It took me, as I said, a year to really um, come to a conclusion that Yeshua is the Messiah. I didn't, I didn't have any other um, doubt that He is the Messiah. At that time, I have told the people uh, that were around me, I told them, I feel so near to God. And the people start to pray for me. And what happened was very significant. Right when they started to pray for me, I felt that power came and reached me from, it entered to me from my back. And that power was full of love. Um, and my heart started to pound and race really hard. I felt that something entered to my body. I don't remember what those guys prayed. All I remembered was that experience. After they prayed for me, I was just sitting still at the same spot without moving for, I have no comprehension of time, but maybe I've sat there for two hours without moving, trying to fathom what happened to me. It was uh, very powerful. It was, I felt love all around me. It was like I was in a, a river of love and I couldn't move. Uh, it was a wonderful experience. After that day, the enemy spoke to my ear telling me that uh, the reason why I felt so good, it, it's because the people that uh, were around me put something in my food to feel good. I really, I was afraid. However, I went to the Bible and uh, for some reason, I wanted to find the, 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 the words Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Spirit. And the Lord led me to so many verses, especially in the book of Psalm, about, that speaks about the Holy Spirit, that peace came back upon me again. I understood what happened to me. And I understood that whatever came into my body, would never let me go, would never leave me. As long as I am here, that's, that spirit will never let me go. I had a certainty, I had an understanding. As a Jew, I went through several experiences of, I was, as I said, I was in the Far East, um, and uh, I have been through some meditation, and I never experienced something as near to what I've experienced with Yeshua. Furthermore, the experience that I've experienced also is confirmed, was confirmed in the Bible. So there is a double edge to it. So it, it, I became more and more intrigued by that. I want to share a personal story. When I was a, an IDF soldier, when I was in Israeli Defense Force, uh, there was one uh, night that uh, uh, we were in a big practice, big major practice. I was, uh, by the end of my service, I was already a sergeant and I was in charge over several soldiers. We lost our troops, and it was next, it was in the Dead Sea. It was next to a kibbutz called Kalia. I, we, lost, we lost the whole troops, and I was with there with uh, four other soldiers, and we didn't know what to do. We, did, we lost communications with them. It was pitch black. We have decided just to sleep, to stay where we are, to wait for the morning. It was already 2 a.m. We decided just to camp, wherever we were and to wait for the morning so we can somehow find our troops. What happened in that night was very significant. Uh, we went to sleep, we were very tired. While I was sleeping, there was a big bulldozer coming in, charging towards where we were. It was an idea of so uh, bulldozer. If someone would not jump between us, and the soul, uh, between us and that bulldozer, I'll be dead by now. In the middle of the night, out of nowhere, when that bulldozer was really running almost towards us on the dirt, there was a soldier that jumped between us and the bulldozer and said, stop, stop. Back in the day, I was not thinking what was happening. 
But I believe that on that day and that night, it was an angel, an angel that came to protect us. And I've seen God's hand also in Gaza when we were sharing the good news. Uh, we were sharing the good news with soldiers under fire. They were bombarded by shells. You know, if you have been following the reports, there were many, many soldiers that actually died from mortal bombs around Gaza more than anyone else. Uh, there were soldiers in Gaza, but there were also soldiers that died from mortal bombs, including uh, civilians. It was so funny. Anywhere we went, those mortal bombs would not launch. It was pretty interesting. We came in and we heard that there were bombarding before that and bombarding after that, but when we were there, sharing with the good news with the soldiers, we didn't hear anything. I've heard many, many, many stories of Israelis how, and Jewish people that, um, especially when they were lost, that they have felt um, the presence of God. Because there is so much um, uh, objection from the Jewish um, from the Jewish people regarding Yeshua. There's so much objection. I believe that God is leading the people that He chose to go through an experience that will really um, change their lives in a way that they will understand that it's not just logic. It's more true. It's, the, it's more true than, than anything else that they've experienced, any other philosophy that they have learned. There is so much objection from uh, my people, the Jewish people, against Yeshua. I believe that the Lord wants to take the people that He really wants, those that He chose for a purpose, for a calling. He wants them to go through these experiences experience in order to fear Him, to love Him, and just to hold on that path. The ministries that I have, that the Lord put in my heart is, uh, first of all, evangelism, to reach the Jewish people. So far since uh, the year 2000, uh, 18 Jewish people came to know the Lord through uh, this ministry here in this, uh, in this country. There's a lot of uh, seed that uh, were, was uh, sown in the fields here. So I really want to encourage those who are here, uh, the people that are here to really pray for this ministry, to pray for, uh, for people like me, to reach the Israelis and the Jewish people, especially in America. There's, uh, the, Jewish, the Jewish people in America, they, they like to go to synagogue only once a year, twice a year, no more than that, but they don't, they really need to experience God. There is no God experience. The only way to do it is through the Ruach HaKodesh, through the Holy Spirit. Therefore, there is an urgent matter to really uh, pray for ministers, ministries that like uh, the Lord has led me to.